Um, so the next speaker up um, is Michael uh, Klepikoff, um, who was also one of the organizers of all of this. Um, so he deserves our thanks for that. I also learned he's quite a risk taker. He tells me that he had proposed this talk before he had written any code that was going to be used as part of this talk. Um, so with that, I will let him talk about web performance testing in WebDriver. And as a shout out to performance and security, I'm going to be giving away some Androidies for good questions. So with that, I'm going to advance it over to you, Doc. Thank you. Thank you. And I would like to especially thank uh, the uh, Chromium team and uh, Ken Kanye in particular, whose excellent talk you've heard uh, yesterday for working with me and uh, taking patches. So I'm going to uh, show you how you can use uh, WebDriver to enable performance testing in your existing uh, functional WebDriver tests. Now, why is performance important? I think most people in this room, it's safe to say, care about performance uh, of their apps. Um, a faster app obviously makes um, a uh, much better user experience. Uh, and there are studies that uh, performance is money. And this is uh, all exacerbated on mobile, uh, on high latency networks, uh, where even though mobile is becoming faster, mobile networks are becoming faster, latency uh, is going to continue to be a problem for the foreseeable future. So um, why um, test uh, performance? Why not just go through um, our pages and uh, optimize them right, and be done with it? Uh, turns out web development is hard. Uh, modern sites are complex. Browsers are complex. Uh, and as people work on uh, features, it's very, very easy to inadvertently introduce a performance regression. Right, and that's how most of them happen. And uh, once the regression gets into production, uh, it's fairly expensive to get it fixed. Many people are involved, and uh, you uh, kind of spoil the user experience. And uh, performance um, problems are especially nasty uh, to debug. So it could get uh, very expensive, as opposed to if you catch it close to where it was introduced, uh, it's a lot cheaper when uh, only the developer is involved, ideally even on pre-submit before the regression ever hits uh, the source tree. Um, so what tools are uh, available to uh, test performance? Uh, there are a number of tools, including, for example, open source uh, web page test, uh, which I happen to be uh, working on. Uh, they've been focused so far on page load performance testing where you submit the URL and it runs it under various conditions, various browsers, and uh, gives you the results and tells you uh, what can be improved, what's fast and slow on the page. Uh, there's recently been a WebDriver integration and web page test where you can submit uh, a JavaScript uh, WebDriver program. It'll run it for you. So that's all good. But um, it's expensive to integrate it into an existing uh, tool chain that you may have uh, already as a continuous build and um, continuous testing uh, customized to your organization's needs. A web page test, for example, has its own idea of what a test job is. And if you want a, to start, for example, a web server as part of the test, uh, that gets tricky. That uh, gets very non-trivial to uh, integrate. Um, so how can we? make it easier? How can we uh, you know, spread uh, performance testing, uh, make it easy for organizations and um, for developers especially? Why not integrate it into the WebDriver itself? Right. So it turns out WebDriver already has a logging API, which fits nicely with that purpose. Basically, you ask when you create WebDriver, um, you ask it to uh, collect certain types of logs. And uh, when you're done with the test, you ask WebDriver, give me back those logs. So why don't we enable uh, performance instrumentation of uh, the pages under test as the test runs? That would fit very, very nicely into an existing tool chain. Uh, you can inject it uh, pretty much transparently for a test. And you can just use any existing functional test that exercises whatever functionality you care about. Uh, and uh, instantly gives you a performance instrumentation for that functionality. Now, how does that work in WebDriver? Uh, there, there is a notion of capabilities that you pass when you create a driver instance. And capabilities are essentially uh, name value pairs, and uh, some of them um, are uh, designed to turn on uh, certain types of logs. So in the latest release of the um, 
Chrome driver that uh, Ken Kanye has talked about yesterday, uh, there is a uh, profiler log uh, type that you can enable as you're creating the, uh, the web driver instance. And again, you can inject it as transparently to the test as you like. You can do it in the setup method. You can do it through a web driver uh, builder abstraction. You can even proxy the web driver wire protocol and inject it that way, make it as transparent as uh, makes sense for your, um, again, custom tool chain. Uh, the test itself remains unchanged completely. Um, unless you want to uh, get advanced and uh, inject your own um, you know, markers uh, in the timeline that you would ultimately get right, to aid uh, in uh, future debugging. So it's free for developers. Developers don't need to do anything. It's injected by the framework. At the end of the test, again injected, you ask the driver for uh, a certain log type. And the log entries in Chrome driver in particular are the uh, dev tools or uh, WebKit remote debugger protocol JSON events for the domains uh, page, network, and timeline. And that lets you track uh, performance and um, memory consumption and uh, things like that. It'll uh, tell you when it does reflows and uh, runs JavaScript and so forth. And that you can submit into any number of um, performance analysis tools, including web page test, which I'm going to use for that demo. But Whatever uh, fits your needs, whatever your organization prefers to use, you can just use it on the side, uh, run the regular tests, and they submit performance results, and uh, they become automatically available to everyone. Now let's show how that works. Let's switch over to the laptop. So I'm going to start. Uh, the uh, Chrome driver. And uh, I'm going to run the test, which launches Chrome, uh, does a Google, uh, loads Google News, does a search for GTAC 2013, and then switches over to uh, web search results for that same uh, term. And then at the end, it um, queries the performance results and submits them to a web page test. And uh, let's see what that looks like. So here you can see a network waterfall chart of what was going on while the test was running. And you can open a Chrome Developer Tools timeline, which gives you a lot of info of uh, what was happening. So imagine you are debugging a performance regression uh, in these tests. Uh, that's immediately uh, very powerful. Now, the neat thing about the new Chrome driver is it also uh, works uh, on Android. And um, I'm sh uh, I'll show you, it's just a, a few lines of code to uh, run the web driver on Android. Um, but the test is otherwise exactly the same, no change. So let's switch over to the mobile projector, see what the device is doing while I do that. It's launching Chrome. Loading news, doing a search for GTAC 2013. Switching over to web search results, and let's switch back to the laptop. It found you know, 2,000 um, DevTools events submitted to web page test. And this is what was happening in the mobile browser while the test ran. Again. Full timeline, a lot of detail on uh, what the mobile browser was doing while uh, the test was running. And again, huge kudos to uh, the Chromium team and the new Chrome driver team uh, for making that happen. Uh, now, this idea in itself is very powerful in the sense that uh, with all the web driver based uh, products that uh, were uh, very well presented at this uh, conference, including native app testing, you could enable performance instrumentation at the level of the framework and reuse existing functional tests uh, to uh, get performance instrumentation for a fixed small cost without changing the real tests. And uh, you know, presumably your developers or worst case test organization uh, produce tests all the time. 
And any of those tests as your uh, functionality progresses can be used as performance tests uh, with uh, near zero incremental effort. Now, as you want to get um, more advanced in the um, uh, testing, you may want to run the test for multiple iterations against, uh, again, it's at the framework level, right? So that your results are more statistically valid. Uh, and um, I'm going to um, slide back to uh, that uh, nice JavaScript API that exists in Chrome that lets you inject custom uh, markers into the uh, DevTools timeline. Um, so that's a great uh, aid in uh, debugging. And um, there is no end to perfection. But um, the whole idea is integrate it into the continuous build, make it part of your regular development process, catch performance regressions before they ever, ever hit production, or even on pre-submit before they ever hit the source tree. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, thank you. Thank you, Michael. I'm clearly a perf nut if I call myself perf guy. So <laughs> I could spend hours with your data. And those are a very cool graph. So, um, we have, the, we have a couple of questions up here on moderator. If we have a live question, somebody will earn themselves uh, baby Jono up here, as my kids call it. Um, otherwise, I'll try to throw it into the screen, and whoever asks this question can have it. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that's going to work. Uh, it says, is this, available, um, is this only available in Chrome driver? If yes, are any plans for uh, IE driver server? Right. So uh, the short answer is. Uh send patches to Selenium. <laughs> uh, but the longer answer is uh, there is already performance instrumentation for uh, IE, for example, as part of web page test, IE test agents mm -hmm. that could be integrated into IE driver server and made available as a uh, log type uh, through web driver. Um, it's just a matter of someone sitting down and implementing it. Uh, it was easy to implement for Chrome, so I uh, sat down and uh, did it. Uh, it's certainly possible to do for IE driver server, and uh, it would be awesome if someone uh, actually does it. All the pieces are there. It's just a matter of sitting down and doing it. Yeah, sounds like a good uh, good opportunity for someone. How about the live question here? Yeah, uh, Alistair Scott from ThoughtWorks, and the question was, how is this different to the inbuilt performance um, measurement mechanisms in most browsers like Firefox? How is, it's got its own performance. Right. So. How it's different from built-in performance? You mean like if you own uh, Chrome Developer Tools and uh, look interactively at what's going on? Yeah, so that's what I was saying. Like, why don't we just go through all our pages, uh, optimize the heck out of them, and be done with it? Uh, the whole idea is automation. You are using the built-in uh, browser's uh, instrumentation. I am using Chrome's DevTools. I'm just integrating it into the uh, test tool chain. I'm showing you how you can take any existing custom test tool chain that runs WebDriver tests and uh, enable it very easily in that tool chain so that you automatically collect that information for all your tests that run or for a subset, what have you, right? And then you can go back and look at what was going on when that test ran in the past. Uh, and uh, you can automate post-processing and uh, automatically catch performance regressions, send alerts, and so forth. But underneath, it's absolutely taken advantage of uh, whatever uh, the underlying browser is. Great. Thank you, Michael. And uh, here you go. <laughs> um, OK, great. Thank you. Thank you. So um, 